Now we need to decide, do we want green or white phosphor tubes? Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, so so Scott, you used green phosphor tubes at the last range day, right? Yep. And it's like in the movies, like you see that green screen right in front of you. Now what's been more prevalent, prevalent these days is something called white phosphor. And when you look through it, it's a white screen essentially. And why that's um, been more prevalent lately and also more expensive is that the image projected from a white phosphor night vision device is one, it's easier on your eyes. So you less you get less eye fatigue over your time. And also the image is, is more aesthetically pleasing and advantageous in that you get more contrast in the image. It's easier to pick out objects um, for me at least. And for many people, there's a reason why the majority of the military and, and all of the special operations units have been using white phosphor for a while over green phosphor. Um, but that's going to incur more cost, right? So, so we've already upped our budget by deciding to go to a dual tube, upped our budget again by going to articulation, and now we're upping our budget again by going to white phosphor. So it starts to stack up, man, very quickly. And this is just the night vision device here. Just what's, what's hanging off the front of your just helmet. Just what's hanging right? off, Not right? what's got it attached to your helmet. None of the supporting off. gear at all. Exactly. We're talking but. just tubes. And, and to even complicate it further, different grade tubes exist. So you can get a really good white phosphor tube, or you could get a shitty white phosphor tube. So I think, so hold the time out, because I think this is where people go, I, I understood everything you're saying, and that makes perfect sense. But yep. then, dude, now we're getting to the deep end. Like, yeah. what do you mean there's different tubes? So what you can think of it as like, we all have eyeballs, right? Mm -hmm. We all have eyes, but some of our eyes are better than others, right? Mm -hmm. Some people have 20, 20, some people are blind as a bat. You can think of it like that when it comes to night vision tubes, because you might have one white phosphor tube that was manufactured to, and to have really good specs, good resolution, good low light performance. But then you could have another white phosphor tube that has very low performing specs. It's and just this, like the human eyeball. This is kind of why we need to talk about this is like you have to like really um, make sure that you're well read on this stuff so you don't end up like because it's very much like the human eye. Like yep. you can end up getting a blemished white phosphor, uh, like supposedly the best PVS-14 single tube, right? And it can have a hair that's just going to be there forever, just hanging out or in the middle. black dot. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's just like your eyes, right? You might have like a hair that you see in your eye that never goes away. That's exactly how it is with night vision. And you can get stuck with that if either you don't go through somebody super reputable or you don't go through basically like no people who know people. Right. So, you know so when I mean? you're buying night vision, so that's so those are called cosmetic blemishes. Those are just one aspect of the performance. But um, when you're buying the tubes itself, yes, those cosmetic blemishes are really important because you don't want a giant black dot in the middle of your tube because you might pass a vein. But there's also even more technical specs, which you know I, I probably shouldn't get into all of those right now, but they'll dictate how well a tube does in extreme low light. Like you, you might get less TV static or grain mm -hmm. that you might have seen. Some tubes have more grain than others, which makes it harder to see. It's like looking through an old video camera versus like the new iPhone yeah. 4K, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's it is grainy. E exactly. It's you can think perfect. of it like a, like shooting at two hundred thousand ISO versus one hundred ISO. That's the difference. Yeah. So if you have that kind of a difference right I, the the relatability with regard to the different types of tubes this is the way i thought of it when it was explained to me and then when i looked through the different tubes this is what i really got from it so for anybody that's ever out there that's ever gone out and bought diamonds oh, is, there's a yep. rating system there's a grading system for these things and what you can think about it is is clarity mm -hmm. um and then there's also this occlusions that might occur in the processing or in the manufacturing of the tube. And that's what you were relating to, like with yeah. the hair, like mm -hmm. there's like this weird, like dull spot, or there's like a, if you've um, looked through a microscope, like when you were in high school or whatever in, in, uh, in chemistry class or whatever, right. You were, you were, you were looking out through the, the microscope. You can see like, you know that 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 little hair, that little dot, or those little lines aren't actually on the slide you're looking at. They're in the lens somewhere. Right. And that would be, comparable to what you may see when you look through a set of these tubes. Exactly. They might look like little squiggly worms or lines or, mm -hmm. or blemish dots. Gotcha. Right? So, so those are all really important aspects because you want to get your money's worth, right? When, when you're paying for these tubes, because oftentimes it's the same price for this really good tube or the same price for this really bad tube. So knowing the technical specs and details is going to get you your money's worth when it comes to these very expensive investments. Mm -hmm.